today, you need to focus. Why? It's a service challenge. You're going to be cooking for 50 VIPs of Atlantis. 50 VIP guests. This is like a, a proper service challenge. Holy moly. <laughs> There'll be six dishes, two entrees, two mains, two desserts. You'll each be responsible for one dish. And just to add a little bit more fun and excitement into the day, I'll be in the kitchen with you through Mise en Plus, preparation and service. It's going to be fun. <laughs> Can I come in there too? <laughs> oh, no. Straight from the menu here. Quail. <gasps> Mark? We've got a seared breast. We've got a little braised leg, apricot and fig chutney. It's set on a little potato pancake. You ready to cook? Yes. Let's do it. Come on. This is going to be really tough today. We will be running the kitchen, just the six of us. Mm -mm. We'll be serving 50 VIP Atlantis guests. It's going to be really, really hectic. Good luck, everyone. Good luck, guys. Good luck, Same guys. to you guys. I'm really nervous. Three hours is not a lot of time to prep 50 dishes, but I'm ready to fight for my spot. Come on, Christina. Ten minutes is up, guys. Christina and I are both entrees. Today, I'm in charge of the quail. 30 portions, yeah? Yes, sir. Make sure you have some spares. How much spares? Oh, God, I don't know. How many do you reckon you might muck up? All of them. As soon as the quails are deboned, I've got to start cooking off the legs. I cook them with a bit of oil, add some butter, and then flip it over for another 30 seconds, and they're done. Samira, what are you doing next? What's next is the chutney. With the chutney, I just want to follow the recipe step by step, just so I don't stuff up anything. As long as I follow it, it should be fine. The most important thing about making a chutney is getting the flavour balance right, because you do have sweet, but you do have sour as well. You don't want it to be too sweet, because it would be overpowering. Ten minutes! Excuse me. Right, Samira, what's going on here? Keep an eye on that, yeah? Yep. So far, I'm feeling quite confident. Everything's going to plan. You need to move, Rishi. Yes, chef. VIP guests are here. I'm like, oh, my God, service is going to start. Faster, faster, faster. Let's go. Come on. Right, guys, that's it. Service is starting, yeah? Yes, chef. Yes, chef. One quail, one crab. Yeah? Yes, yes. Yes, 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 chef. Come on. Let's go. Ladies on the entrees, how long? One minute, Christina. One minute, chef. Excellent, excellent. I have the quill, especially I like the sauce, uh, that sweet sauce, it was very delicious. Let's go Samira's quail. It does look good, doesn't it? Mm, it looks great. <laughs> very sweet. Oh. Mm. I think the quail my quail breast was cooked beautifully. It was pink. It was absolutely spot on. Same as that little leg, and it's tender and, and delicious. Are you ready to find out what you're going to do today? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're going to love this. Each team has got to create a three course menu for 30 people. You ready? Yes. Yeah. Let's go. Time starts now. <laughs> So the time started, we all decide we're going to spend about two minutes in the pantry looking around at produce first. Got a few to taste. Taste them, taste them. Taste them, yeah. Okay. Oh, these ones are beautiful. Mm -hmm. This is really nice. Are you happy with the calamari? Yeah. We're using some of the best produce from South Australia and the Barossa. Oh, have a look. Just, just look at it. It's, it's amazing. There's no other words to describe it. It's just... Just get heaps of yep. really tasty. Yep. Definitely our surroundings today should inspire our dishes. Um, okay. So we're on what try. What was your uh, thinking? Well, the roast beetroot and roasted uh, grapes. Yeah. Bit of um, red wine syrup to go with it. So and it's like a salad. Uh, yeah, it's a salad. 
For Entree today, we have Samira and Gina working on the roast beetroot and grape salad. How's everyone doing? Yep. We're all good, good. Gina. All good, wonderful. Only this part is leaking. It's a bit wet, isn't it? Oh, no, the water. So I'm chopping yeah. and trailing. Okay. Uh, this water is also ridiculous. It's not a typical master chef kitchen. It's raining. Oh, dear. <laughs> Loving the conditions. We're all getting wet today, regardless of where we stand. So we all just need to power through, have a positive attitude, and that's going to get us through this cook. Samira. Hello. Hello, Aldo. How are you going? Very well, darling. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm sorting with the enemy, mate. Gina. I'm going to say Gina. Stop talking to them. <laughs> He's trying to distract me. I'm, I'm not an entree today. We're making roasted beetroot salad with uh, a Barossa golf cart, uh, some fresh greens, grapes and nuts. It reminds me of Russia a lot. Russians love beetroot. <laughs> I have come up with a concept of using beetroot because I love beetroot. I absolutely think that beetroot is a supermodel of the vegetables. What great to using the, the, long, the long, dark ones, yes. quite tanning, but they've got some good sweetness. So in today's entree, we're definitely championing a lot of the local Barossa ingredients. We've got the Barossa goat's curds with the sweet beetroot and these robust grapes, and then finishing off with our Shiraz vinaigrette. Okay. Samira, smell these. Which one do you prefer? I think I like, I quite like this that one. That one's enough. That one's a bit more yeah, nice. sweeter. With the vinaigrette, we definitely want it to be a massive flavour. The wine reduction is what's going to turn this simple salad into a really classy and complex entree. OK, come on, guys. Keep going. Where are you guys up to, Samira? Toasting the nuts. I'm going to be on the grapes next. Gina and I are on entree today, and we're making a salad of beetroot with goat's curd and grapes. What, leave them whole, cut in half, what? I would leave them whole, they're quite pretty. We've chosen to use sapphire grapes. They will go well with beetroot. They're awesome, hey. The other way we're celebrating grapes today is with a red wine vinaigrette. We're in the Brossa and I absolutely love wine, especially Shiraz, so we'll be using that in today's entree. How far shall I reduce it? I reckon you can keep going, like, don't stress about it. I want the vinaigrette to be really sticky and very flavoursome. Does it need anything in it? I need to reduce more. OK. Just make sure the flavour's perfect, mate. Yeah. Right, listen up. Still lots to do. 20 minutes to go. Come on, Come guys. On. Let's go. Come on. Samira, Gina, ready to go on the yes, entree? Yes. Feel well confident? Yes, perfect. Good. And you've got those beetroots, they're going to be ready in time. Yes. And they're going to be roasted perfectly. It's nearly time for service, and all our elements for the beetroot and grape salad are coming together really nicely. Vinaigrette, mm, that's getting quite syrupy. Oh, this is beautiful. Try that. Try that. It tastes beautiful. Yep. That is beautiful. Tasting the vinaigrette, it's balanced. I can taste that beautiful flavour of Shiraz in it. It's very intricate on the palate. I love it. And I want that one plated up now. I think it's a beautiful way to use Barossa wine to tie this dish together. Aldo, let's go. Come on. Come on, bro. Come on. Red team, blue team, are you ready for this? Yes, George. Service starts now. Go, yes. guys. Come on, serve up. Come on. Lay plates now. Let's go. Come on. Why don't you take that, yes? yes Come on, get it on the plate. Yes. Welcome to my world, huh? Yeah, it's a beautiful world. Everyone has their role in the production line because we think that's going to be the fastest way to get each course out. Looking good, guys. We've decided to place the beetroot onto the plate, some grapes, a reduction, salad, and finish it off with the beautiful goat's curd. That one looks good. They're looking really good, guys. I know in my heart that I've put a beautiful dish on a plate. Do we need a little bit of this? Definitely, we hero those grapes big time. The red wine reduction on there is just amazing. Go, guys! Come on! Right, we've got blue team hitting the uh, table, and it looks good. Reese. Hey, guys. What have we got? For the entree, you've got the roasted beetroot with the red grapes, which we blisted in the pan, with the goat's cheese from the brossa, and we finished it off with a red wine and grape vinaigrette. Lovely. Thank you. No worries. Enjoy, guys. Cool.
a really familiar dish, but full of flavour. Taking great ingredients, like those beetroots and that goat cheese from the area, and really giving it lots of respect. Bags of flavour with the grapes that are refreshing, and you play this game where you have a little bit of the beetroot, some of the goat's curd, some of the grape, and it's really, really wonderful and beautiful. I, I think you're right, familiar flavours, but what's not familiar is that sweet, sticky and well-seasoned red wine dressing on the bottom, and that really holds the dish together. And those long grapes, they're slightly tannic, it's delicious with that dressing. I love it. It's a reinvention of an old classic, and they've done a great job with it. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I think what gives it richness, what gives it character is that lovely vinaigrette on the bottom. A ripping start by the blue team. Very nice. Yeah, it's a good dish. It's like one of those tight football matches. It's one all, and it all comes down to those entrees. Both entrees were delicious and both were a celebration of grapes in their entirety. But there was one that stuck its head above the other, and that was... The salad of beetroot. Congratulations, blue team. You are the winner. Holy moly, I can't believe that we've won. I'm proud of my team because they're the people who led us to victory today. Blue team, you gave us familiar flavours of beetroot, goat's cheese and grapes and the walnuts, but that addition of that red wine vinaigrette was really yummy and tied it all together. Well done, blue team. You've got one thing to do today, and that's beat Heston. <laughs> it is possible. Chefs are competitive. So, yeah, of, of course I want to win. So here are the rules. Something to even things up a little. 90 minutes to cook a delicious dish, an entree, main or dessert. One dish, 90 minutes. Heston, on the other hand, has to cook all three in 90 minutes. Entree, main <laughs> and dessert. Obviously, Heston's going to cook with all three, but the question is, which will you be cooking with? You decided that when you walked in through those doors and stood in line. Daniel, you're cooking entree. Christina, you're cooking main. And Rishi, you're cooking dessert. So, this is for you, Daniel. The entree. I'm hoping the entree box has got salmon, chicken, or any game bird. <laughs> eggs. And lots of eggs. Duck egg, quail egg, hen eggs. You've also got some salmon caviar. Essen, is there something Daniel should be thinking about right now? A bit of advice, I would just say, keep it simple. You've got 90 minutes to cook joyous food, and your time starts now. This is a dish that I've, I've just seen in books and stuff, like uh, elements and whatnot, but it's kind of like a breakfast in a way, and it was the first thing that popped in my head. And 62 degree egg is the hero of the dish. Like, he's got the egg right there. It's gonna have uh, garlic croutons, parmesan wafer, with a mushroom custard, and then salmon roll emulsion. That'd be... <laughs> <laughs> the sous vide would take a while to get up to temperature. I've got to cook the egg as well, which will take at least 45 to 55 minutes. It's imperative I get this on ASAP, otherwise the egg will not be set in time. A 62 degree egg is an, a whole egg placed in a water bath at 62 degrees. Boiling an egg normally, it, water boils at 100 degrees, so you'll get a lot softer consistency in a 62 degree egg. It can be a tricky technique. We're using a number of different uh, techniques today, so hopefully, hopefully it shines. It's imperative I get the techniques right today because it's not every day we get to be in the same room as Heston, let alone cook up against him. Wow. Who needs a food presser when you've got a Heston? Yeah. Um, right now, I'm just making my mushroom custard, um, which is going to be the base, or the 
hopefully the, re the reveal element of the dish. The idea of a mushroom custard is similar to a concept of a sweet custard, except, you know, you're, you're imparting mushroom flavours in, into a cream base, which is then partially set. My sous is at temperature now, and it's time to put my eggs into the actual machine itself. I'm going to cook these eggs for about 45 to 55 minutes. I've got to essentially have that done. If the egg isn't cooked the way I want it to be, it, there's no point having the dish. So, a bit stressful. The base of my dish is a mushroom custard, and as it's cooling, I'm whisking up four eggs, which is then going to be the setting agent for the custard. It's important that the setting agent is in similar temperature to the actual sauce, otherwise the temperature will allow the thing to split. Daniel might be struggling. I get my mushroom sauce. But it's not cool. I'm definitely worried that I'm falling behind. If I screw it up, I'm going to be so disappointed. Daniel's, from what I can see, he's really stressed down there. The pressure's getting to him. Can you just slow down? You're making one dish. Focus. Yeah, think about what you need. Let's go, Daniel, mate. Come on, clear your head. You're getting flustered. I pour my custard mix into the jars, and then they go into the oven at 120 degrees. Daniel's finally back on track. I think he's going to get a great dish up. I'm making a row emulsion. So I've got the row in there, which is, you know, essentially it's eggs themselves, almost like a mayonnaise to finish it off for the breakfast. How are the eggs going? Finding out right now. It's time to check my 62-degree egg. It's got to be the hero of the dish. And if it's split, if it's broken, it's pretty much ruined my dish. Crafted it and it's the way I want it to be, so I'm very, very relieved. Oh, that's hot. I don't know if the cast is set enough. Um, I've never done it before, but hopefully, seeing it wobble slightly, maybe jiggle a little bit too much, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned it isn't set. I add my sprinkle of texture elements in my garlic croutons and my parmesan wafers. And then to go with that, the salmon roll emulsion. The next part is adding my 62 degree egg into this jar, and it's looking great. Now it's time to do something I've never done before. So I grab a blowtorch and a smoking gun. Here's to you, Heston. I'm going to smoke the jar. I've got no idea how it's going to turn out. You know, I don't even know if I'm using it right. I wanted to prove myself today, and here's a perfect opportunity. Fingers crossed. This is it. Ten, nine, nine eight, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. That's it. Congratulations. Great cooking, guys. Well done. Whether or not I win that immunity pin, I'm still happy with what I've put up today. For your entree, we have 62 degree egg and hay smoked mackerel. Interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Should we taste the one in the jar first? Yeah. Oh, nice. The, the flavour of the smoke, the, the little salty, fishy pop of the salmon roe, that beautifully cooked egg. I think it's a great dish. I think it's quite textural. I think mm. the gooey egg, the crunchy crumbs, it's like eggs on toast but reworked. Great first dish, really impressive. To kick off this finale, we're going to start with a mystery box. Oh. But it's not just any mystery box. The people that chose what's in it are some of the best chefs in the country. Now, these chefs have each brought an ingredient that will make up the mystery box. First up, Can, what have you brought us, mate? Today I've brought 
duck. Darren, you're next up, mate. Right, guys, today I've brought passion fruit. Ooh. Fresh foraged saffron milk cap mushrooms. Well, I have today kohlrabi. Pandan leaves. Josh, surprise me. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a fish under there? <laughs> well, it's not just any fish, it's King George whining. Kirsten, are you going to surprise me as well? Unfortunately not. <laughs> <laughs> this is gold chocolate. Oh, Yum! So good. so good. Last but not least, Martin, what have you brought us, mate? Something very special. Tomato ponzu. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, you've got 75 minutes to cook. Normal mystery box rules apply which means that you need to use at least one of these ingredients in your finished dish. Just 75 minutes. Starts now. Come on! Oh! OK, gelatin wax. This is grand finale day. It's the pinnacle of this competition. So whatever I make, it needs to be a lot of layers of flavour, a lot of technique, and visually I want this dish to be really stunning. Here he is. There he is, big oh, piece. Guys. Gelatin oh, wax. Hello. Lovely. Gelatin wax. What are we cooking, mate? Um, I'm going to do uh, pan-seared King George whiting. Yep. Salt brine kohlrabi scales on top. And I'm making a broth to go around. Uh, I'll make a gelatin wax oil to go with it. I also want to use the gelatin wax um, leaves to put in between the kohlrabi scales. You want to pick up that trophy, right? I do, yes. It's moving in the right direction. Let's move it and uh, make sure you execute everything perfectly, mate. 100%. Thanks, guys. Thank on, you. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Hey! Bro. This looks incredible. You're an amazing cook. Oh, this thank... is going to be great. Thank you, mate. I thank love you. that stuff. Come on, let's go, guys! Come on, Come on now! Yes, Jazzy. Beautiful, Jazzy. Beautiful, mate. It's amazing that people who have been self-taught have this array of skills. Isn't it? I, I take my hat off to them. Yeah. It's really impressive. Go, Pete. Beautiful, mate. My dish is King George Whiting with kohlrabi, pine mushrooms and Geraldton wax. King George Whiting is very delicate, sweet fish. I want the fillets to be perfect because I want this dish to look quite refined and beautiful. Beautiful, Pete. I've got my broth underway. I've done my Geraldton wax oil and I'm brining my kohlrabi. So now I need to cook my fish, cook off these mushrooms, start getting organised for plating and season my broth to make sure it actually tastes really good. Yeah! Woo! Delicious looking fillets there. Beautiful, oh, Pete. Beautiful. Yeah. Yes, Pete. Throughout this competition, I've definitely tried to focus on a more refined style and present very thought out plated dishes. And I want this to be the most beautiful one yet. Ah, oh, Pete, that is elegant as hell. Yes, Jesse. Two minutes! Two minutes, guys. Come on. Come on, Chelsea, bring it home now. Yes, oh, Pete. Oh, oh you're good. There you go, brother. Yeah! Chefs, give us a hand. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, nine, four, three, two, one. That's it. That's it. All right, very special mystery box in the kitchen today, set by our very special guest chefs. You all cooked what looked to be beautiful dishes. And the first one we'd like to test belongs to Pete. I think that this dish is a very good representation of how far I've come in the competition. I hope that the judges recognise that this is someone who is trying to elevate their cooking to a grand finale standard. Pete, that is an interesting and beautiful looking dish. 
It's King George Whiting with kohlrabi, pine mushrooms and gelatin wax. All right, mate. We're going to test it. Well done. Oh, thank you. Beautiful dish. Thank you. Let's start with the fish. It was beautifully opaque, glistening, delicious. Then the broth. Your use of the tomato ponzu, together with the Geraldton wax, has given a dish that is perfumed with tomato and lime. Yeah. It is just delicious. Clean, contemplative, modern, refined, sophisticated food. This has clearly become your hallmark in this kitchen, and it just really leapt out of the bowl for me. The way that you seasoned that broth with that tomato ponzu, it was perfect and a deft touch. Like, and that's what we've come to love with you. You bought us a dish that belongs in any top restaurant around the country. Well done. Thanks, guys. Yeah.